I want to show you what a son of God should look like. This is what you should look like. This is a tremendous picture of what you should look like. You're people of love. You have righteousness, which is excellent, God's nature. You're vessels of honor. We can trust you. You are in submission to God. That word submission is to come into agreement with the mission. People that have rebellion don't like the word submission. They don't like it at all. So when you are a doer of the word, you're in, you're in agreement with the mission. You're in submission to the word and you're a doer. And that's, I want to help you understand that. You're people that have uh, humility. You do not consider yourself greater than another. Uh, you're people of peace. You're peacemakers, blessed of the peacemakers. For they shall be called what? The children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers. If you're not a peacemaker, then I wonder what kind of son and daughter you are. Your feet are to be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I'm a peacemaker. People would disagree with that because I fight hard for people's lives. And people misunderstand my intensity. So you have to have joy. The joy of the Lord is somebody else's strength, is my strength. Love. God is love. You're to be people of love. I should be able to look at you and say, there goes love. So then we have long-suffering, we have meekness, we have goodness, godlike, gentleness, faithfulness, temperance, self-control. I like the, the synonym called moderation. It's my favorite synonym for the word uh, temperance. People think of one thing and, and self-control, nobody has it, but moderation is a good one, isn't it? Be moderate, be people of moderation. This is what God created. If we would let this image be part of our persona or our personality, we would get along. Would we not? This really is who you're supposed to be. This is his image. And if you want to find these, these are called the fruits of the Holy Spirit in Galatians. What are the fruits of the Holy Spirit? The, the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit is to produce a fruit, a, a result. So the work of the Holy Spirit is to produce this in you. Your family tree may not have this. So you're not to be continue to be formed in the image of your fallen family tree. Your marriage may not have this. Why not get it out of your marriage? Your church may not look like this. Get the junk out of your church. When you get born again, the law of sin still talk to you. It was part of your personality. It was part of your temptation. It was part of your journey of learning to be an overcomer, growing up, being reformed, so you can be transformed into his image. Isn't this a good-looking person? Look around at somebody and say, that's who I am. If you're married, if you're sitting here married, uh, don't argue about this later. Don't go home and say, well, you're a hypocrite. You said that and it's not true. Listen, we all have our stuff, don't we? When you find some stuff in somebody else, you've got your own junk. So let's be honest. That's being humble, Okay. So this is God's image, his nature, his personality. But Romans 5.12 says, Therefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, that word world means mankind, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned, and could I add it, have fallen short of the glory of God. What is the glory of God? His nature. So when it says, and I quoted this to you earlier, if by glory to glory we are being changed into his image, that means his image is coming to us. We're embracing his nature. 
were getting away of that what's called the old man, putting on this new man in Christ, and that we're not the same person we were yesterday. I'm not the same Henry I was when I got born again. And you should say amen because you didn't want that new son. I had to grow up fast. And I'm still growing up. So if you find something in me that's not renewed, don't write books about how evil I am. Just, just say he's just got the law of sin and he's learning how to defeat it. And I'll give you that same mercy yourself. When I find stuff in you that's not right, I'm going to help you recover yourself because I know you hate it. Now, what came into man in the Garden of Eden is the next chart. Oh, sin, yes, but what is sin? Sin is a kingdom by its fallen nature. This is what came into Adam and Eve. The first thing that came into Adam and Eve when the floodgates were opened, they saw they were naked. They were ashamed of their nakedness. They were afraid of God. What came into them was fear. They became separated from God. Then they had guilt about themselves, and then they had shame. Instantly, they were flooded with feelings and thoughts that they had not been taught. There was a kingdom invisible by its fallen nature that they gave permission to continue to give them thoughts, and they embraced it. This is the state of the world, and a lot of this is in God's sons and daughters, even in this room, everywhere as you go, the law of sin, which is what this is, is somewhere just around the corner or part of our personality or our spirituality, and God wants you to be able to recognize it because your maturity is whether or not you understand what good and evil is. Discernment, self-discernment. It's best people understand what you're overcoming last, and you understand it first. So I do, and you should learn to do, self-inventory. You do that when you take a shower. You look at the dirt and see where it needs to go, don't you? You clean your dishes, don't you? You wash your clothes. You clean your car. You scrub this and you scrub that. Boy, you're really smart, aren't you? Except for things that aren't clean in your spirituality, and your personality, we ignore. Well, not all of you, but look at this stuff here. You've got unloveliness. You've got conflict. You've got sadness. You've got occult thinking, which is a counterfeit of God. It could be religion. It could be superstition. You've got accusation. You've got rebellion. You've got idolatry. You're, you're, you're all thinking about yourself, and you're the, you know, it's all about you. Then you add a little self-pity because people don't understand how important you are. Then you have accusation, you have impatience, you have unkindness, you have bitterness, feelings of hopelessness and despair and worthlessness. You have addictions that begin to come, which is rooted in need to be loved. Self-indulgence, no moderation there. Harshness, unfaithfulness, rejection, unloving spirits, sadness, conflict, all this stuff is the foundation for human personality today. Your families are filled with it. The world is filled with it. It's the foundation for wars because people don't trust God. It's the, they don't trust each other either. It's the foundation for everything. This is Satan's nature, and it is reinforced by a kingdom, by its fallen nature, that gives people thoughts to influence them to agree. Every one of you are tempted with these thoughts. Jesus was tempted with these thoughts too. In fact, the Bible says Jesus was tempted, the Son of God was tempted in all points such as we are, yet he didn't participate with those thoughts. You don't have to participate with those thoughts either. You don't have to. This, you could say, our teaching is, who am I? This is, you could say, is who I am not. Who I'm not. This is not to be you. This is the stuff that the law of sin has produced. And the law of God, God wants to form you 
back into his image. He wants to recover what he lost. He wants sons and daughters of God the way he intended. Father knows best. And he's not going to change his image to meet yours. You're going to change your image to meet his. His. 